Welcome back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck. Today, we are in Greendale, Indiana, and we're here at the Greendale Cabin. I'm joined by Joey Lynch. Joey, thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. So how did Greendale get its name? How did it come to be? It, Greendale, like many cities, um, exists because of its location. Um, on a ridge overlooking the Ohio River, um, backed up to Tanner's Creek, and the waterways provided conveyance for manufacturers goods to the greater world. Yeah. Um, the city sits atop a, ma a massive aquifer. Yes, an aquifer. So it's like the water yep. under the ground. Yep. Is that why it's so like lushy around well, here? Well, it was um, a natural location for the distilleries. So we had many of those and they provided jobs for generations of Greendale residents. The history of Greendale. So you guys are tied to your neighbor Lawrenceburg, uh, also known as Old Town. Correct. Okay. Um, they are located on the lower ground near the Ohio River, and the um, earliest distilleries. I keep getting that wrong. Uh, in the area were located, um, uh, and a bus bustling downtown area was developed because of the Old Town. Um, slow moving conveyance pulleys or horse, pulled horses, Yeah. Um, they used to bring residents up to and along the scenic ridge, which is now our Ridge Avenue in Greendale for Sunday outings. Mm -hmm. I thought those were nice. In 1882, um, there was already some land speculation that um, was to become, we were to become Greendale. And Stephen Ludlow laid out um, all the streets in Greendale. And in 1968, one from 52 to 68, um, Ezra Hayes laid out the town in greater detail. And we do have like uh, Ludlow Street, and we have a Hayes Street, and we have uh, in between. So many of the names are um, named after a lot of individuals, a lot of history, uh, people in history. Um, but Hayes did um, have it surveyed, and, and he beat back an attempt by Lawrenceburg to maintain control of the town. So finally, after a court hearing, Greendale um, was incorporated as a town in 1872, but it wasn't recorded yet. Okay. Until 1883. Right. I, th I thought that there was a discrepancy of date. the dates. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then the town finally incorporated as a city in um, 1995. Oh. So we are a city of Greendale. Oh, yes, you are. Yes. Joey, Angie Walters has been working just short of a decade on a project, and I understand that the city of Greendale just got some great news. Can you tell us about that? We did. Um, she shared with us last week that um, the residents, we've been, we have a lot of pride and pride of place and we have fostered a culture of care for all of our community. And from the mansions on Ridge Avenue um, to move you know, to more modest homes, um, but just last week we were notified that um, a large portion of Greendale has been added to the National Register, or National Register of Historic Places. Yes. Yes, and the boundaries. And that, that's huge. That's it huge. is huge. After like, so much time in history, that is such a that that is such it's a, a great designation and the boundaries are pretty wide I mean you've got the Greendale Cemetery on the north the former um, Seagram's distillery on the mm -hmm. south and then Ridge Avenue is on our front on the east and Nallen Avenue on the back side of Greendale is on the west and so of that designation 600 structures um, 550 of them are deemed to contribute to the historical designation and um, it's a real testimony um, to the caretakers of the structures yeah. because, um, you know, we, we do share a lot of pride in Greendale and we're very, very proud of this designation. Yeah, so well, congratulations. Thank that's, you, that's, thank you. That's beautiful. And congratulations to Angie Walters. Yes, yeah, I mean, with all that hard work, her yes. persistence. Yes, and I think she said persistence was key. That's that. right, that's <laughs> so. right. Joey, we are sitting in the Greendale cabin, and I know that this is a beloved structure. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? It is. Um, it was built as a Civilian Conservation Corps, which is a CCC project um, as part of Franklin, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal program. Mm -hmm. And if you travel throughout Indiana, throughout the state, you'll notice that there are a lot of similarities of the Greendale cabin um, and many of the structures located in the city parks um, also built by the CCC. Right. You'll see similarities. Um, it was constructed primarily <clears throat> of local materials um, on the inside and the out. If you look, it's uh, Creek Rock from yeah. Tanner's Creek, mm -hmm. local here and down chestnut trees that failed during the great chestnut blight. So, um, and that was basically through the eastern half of the United States. Okay. So, wow. um, and then generations, you know, Greendale residents come here for, um, you know, they reserve it for wedding receptions, um, wedding 
actual weddings. And it must be a popular place. You said you guys were like booked out to next year with weddings we and events. We are. And, we are. Yeah. I, which I can see why. Family reunions are our best. Okay. And um, you know, just to have a baby shower or a birthday party. I mean, it's it, it is it's amazing. It really is. I mean. People love this cabin. Yeah. They're very proud of it. Yeah, I'm happy to be right here right now. Um, it, it, it's kind of what we call like a, a touchstone in the lives of Greendale residents. Um, and it's kind of the beating heart of the community. The Greendale Cemetery is a lovely park-like resting place for both the Greendale and Lawrenceburg uh, residents. It is. Yeah? It is. Um, the Greendale Cemetery Association was founded in 1867 and it still operates under the original charter. And um, Benjamin Grove was an engineer from Louisville, Kentucky, who was hired to lay out a plan for the Greendale Cemetery. Um, it was 30 acres of land, farmland, and um, a noted landscaper designed, uh, and the designer lined the long entranceway at Ridge Avenue, which is across the street from us, with, well, on the opposite side of, the, we have two entrances, and the opposite side um, of the cemetery was lined with New Regions spruce. Um, which today provide a shady drive to the burial ground. It's a long entryway with yes. the spruce on each side. Um, this end that we are on, the Nallen end, has an iron scroll walk cemetery sign at the Nallen entrance. And it's very pretty, very arch-like um, type. Yeah, and it was pretty. relocated from Ridge Avenue, so in 1941. Oh. Yeah. And that's uh, handsome Bedford Stone entry was installed on the opposite end. Joey, can you tell us about the temporary tent city that sprang up right next to the Greendale Cemetery that Lawrenceburg residents used? Yes, it was a uh, grassy area next to the cemetery. It became a temporary tent city for Lawrenceburg residents, um, and it was because of the Ohio floodwaters. Um, the flooding of Newtown Cemetery was located on lower ground in Lawrenceburg. That was mm -hmm. their uh, cemetery. And it caused Lawrenceburg residents to begin moving their loved ones' remains over to Greendale. So immediately after um, the construction of our cemetery, we had a place inside of the Greendale Cemetery for the Lawrenceburg remains of their uh, family members. Um, the massive 1937 flood uh, basically, the, all the graves remaining in Lawrenceburg um, couldn't be identified, they could be identified, were removed, and they did come over here. So um, most residents who could afford to relocated permanently to the higher ground in Greendale. Higher ground. And higher ground, yes. that's right. Had to love that higher ground back then. <laughs> well, and then several churches followed their yeah. congregations in the years to come. Yeah, yeah. so that's, right. that's how it kind of built up. How has the distillery industry, how has that impacted Greendale? The distillery, um, distilling was a, a bustling industry in Lawrenceburg and Greendale beginning in like 1809. Um, over the decades, a number of distilleries operated in different um, areas, locations. Yeah. Yeah. In 1898, we had two brothers. They were Squibb brothers. It was W.P. Squibb and his brother G.W. Squibb. And beginning, um, they, in the distil they began the distillery in Greendale and then when W.P. died in 1913, um, his sons reorganized the company and constructed what was um, probably the last distillery elected prior to Prohibition. So what eventually became Joseph E. Seagram's and Sons um, straddled the city lines between Lawrenceburg and Greendale and once employed as many as 2,500 Greendale residents. Wow. Yeah. So um, many of the beautifully well-kept houses um, in the residential neighborhoods of Greendale were home to employees of Seagram's. Yes. And so, um, and Shinley Distilleries, and they were constructed basically for them or as such, so they could live there. The industry began to decline though in um, late 1980s and kind of the early 1990s, um, but it's undergoing a resurgence over a much smaller scale. Joey, along Ridge Avenue, there are some spectacular, beautiful mansions. Um, please do tell us about that. There are. Um, Ridge Avenue, uh, a lot of the homes are an architect designed uh, type of home. Mm -hmm. um, and we have more uh, probably in the community in the Dearborn area than most. Um, wealthy businessmen from Lawrenceburg and Greendale built the spacious homes and they built them for their sons, themselves, their daughters, and many of these grand homes um, that still distinguish Ridge Avenue mm -hmm. are there, but were sold off as families couldn't take care of them or they died away um, and they were demolished. So they fell into despair and um, were converted to other uses. 
Hmm. But today the homes are being returned to their former glory, which we're really happy about that. Yes, yes. yes. We have a few um, that we note it, that, that are very, very special to us. Um, the William P. Squibb House, uh, 139 Ridge Avenue, was designed by Cincinnati architect John Fitzhugh Thornton. And after being sold off by the family in 1945, the, it's an Italian type villa. Um, it was uh, serviced as a home shelter and for flood events. Really? And also for, um, it was homeless shelter during the floods and a location for church services, and then a boarding house and an apartment building. But um, currently it's being restored as a private residence, which we're very proud of that. Awesome. So the, um, the next one I wanna talk about was the Groff O'Shaughnessy House. It's at 141 Ridge Avenue, um, but it did not appear um, in the 1847 Atlas of Dearborn County. It was kind of not known. And what happened was, is um, it was originally designed and built um, in that Italianate style again, yeah. but was remodeled in the Georgian, Georgian Revival um, style in 1927. So under the direction of the Cincinnati architect, G.C. Burroughs. Uh, at the request of new owner O'Shaughnessy, um, who was partner with his brother um, in the James Walsh Distillery, um, they went ahead and did it made the Georgian, Georgian style is what it was. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was, wasn't a really known place, but then it, it kind of made its way, it made its name. Does it still have that architecture today? Yes. Nice. Yes. And then we have like two more. Um, the Sicking Bannister Cookhouse is at 337 Ridge Avenue, Avenue circa 1886, and, or 1866, I apologize. 1866? 20 years, 1866. Wow. And, that has some unique distinction um, of being a home to five genera generations. Really? Mm -hmm. So they've kept of it. one family. Wow. Yes, one family. And they sold, um, it a, the first time they sold it, it was sold as a floral shop. Mm -hmm. And then what happened um, for just a brief period. Yeah. And then the, the, ha the house um, was maintained and once again is in the care of a new owner, which will be residents of Greendale. So, kind of bringing these homes back is what they're doing, keeping their natural charm in them. That's great. Um, the Cornelius O'Brien house mm -hmm. is at 455 Ridge Avenue. Okay. And that one was designed by the architect John Deacon in the Tudor revival style. Ooh. And that was in 1919. Okay. So it expanded, um, was expanded by the same architect in 1932. Mm -hmm. And now is our Fitch Denny funeral home. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So it is, it, it has a lovely, uh, it, I mean, it is a funeral home, but it has, it has a lovely yes. style yes. to it. Yes, yeah. I'm like, and for a funeral home, it, there's, the, somehow that makes sense. It's graceful, me. let's yes. say that. Yeah. It is a very graceful, graceful place. Mm -hmm. Perfect adjective. Okay. Joey, wow, you have been a wealth of great information about this incredible city. Um, I am most excited for you guys that you got on the um, National Historical Registry, the way that you have. That is, that's so big. And um, just thank you for your time. Oh, thank today. you. Thank you for coming to Greendale. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, today here in Greendale, Indiana. Joey Lynch, thank you again for your time. Thank you for coming to our wonderful little city. Oh, I love it here. Absolutely. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.